John Hall, um, who's the American rancher who has CIA uh, connections in uh, Costa Rica, admits for the first time oh, yeah. that he uh, aided um, the rebels there. According to this uh, story, the explosives that were used to bomb uh, Pastora were uh, brought by North and Secord in their connections to John Hall's uh, ranch, and that Hall got these uh, explosives um, to the terrorists who attempted to uh, assassinate uh, Pastora. It was also alleged that it was John Hall's ranch in Costa Rica that uh, was the drug connection site where the uh, U.S. planes uh, landed to uh, bring uh, weapons and materials to the Contras and then picked up drugs on uh, Hall's ranch and flew them back to the U.S. Mainly cocaine? Cocaine, marijuana, heroin, a whole variety of um, drugs. Well, once these stories uh, broke, Hall finally decided that he would admit, yes, he was an arms supplier for the Contras. Yes, he aided the rebels. He had connections, but he denied the drug uh, connection. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he wanted to admit the uh, lesser charges, the country uh, connection, in order to uh, deny the uh, larger uh, charges that he uh, provided explosives to try to assassinate uh, Pastora and uh, was also involved in the drug connection. Christian Science Monitor had a story in which they uh, had a, a lengthy analysis of the CIA's largely unexamined role, at least by the Congress, of gun running operation. Now, the inconclusive argument over the applicability of the Bolin Amendment, as far as North and CIA and C Corps were concerned, would turn out to be irrelevant if the CIA itself was the center of the Contra arming operation. The um, Christian Science Monitor also said that there is another guy in the CIA who is actually running things for the CIA Central American Task Force, and he is responsible within the CIA, and he's one up in the ladder from Oliver North. This guy's name is Alan Fears, or Fires, F-I-E-R-S, and uh, the Monitor quoted a guy that said, uh, an anonymous North American source that says that everyone imagines that Ollie North was top dog of the Contra effort. What they don't realize is that to begin with, this was basically a CIA show, and secondly, most of the time, Fears, who is much slyer than North, was <laughs> able to manipulate Ollie into what he wanted. Being the dupe. In the Have you ever story. heard that name before? I've never I, I had Have seen that in one or two New York Times stories, but he's not widely known mm -hmm. as um, a major player. In here. I think one of the big points of, the, of this whole thing, a lot of us tend to think, well, this all came in with the Reagan administration. They're just a bunch of thugs. They like to live <laughs> above, they think they're above the law, et cetera. But as some of these re revelations show, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, there were people in the CIA and without during the Carter administration working to dump Carter and try, uh, uh, actually establishing our foreign policy. And this has been going on for decades now. Speaking of CIA operations and political assassinations under the Reagan administration, some fairly interesting stories have come out recently about events in Panama over the last seven years. One of our viewers, Dennis Lawson of Austin, sent us several different articles that make a very interesting juxtaposition, starting with an article from June the, uh, or August the 2nd, 1981, that reports on how Panamanian strongman General Omar Torrios had been killed in an airplane crash in Panama. Torrios was the gentleman in Panama that negotiated with Jimmy Carter the Panama Canal Treaty that would give the Panama Canal back to Panama in the 1990s. And Torrio was a big uh, populist who was friends with uh, Fidel Castro and who said in the article um, after his death that the two people he admired most were Jimmy Carter, who had shown courage in negotiating this uh, Panama Canal Treaty with him, and Fidel Castro, who he thought was a, a brilliant political uh, leader. Just the sort of uh, people that the Reagan administration would not um, like. Well, the plane of Mr. Trujillo crashed, and the day after the crash, there was a UPI story that has headlines, Trujillo's body returned, 
role by CIA alleged. So from the very beginning, it was alleged that the CIA was responsible for the explosion of the plane that killed uh, General uh, Torrios during the first year of the uh, Reagan administration. Well, just this week, there have been a series of demonstrations in Panama against the uh, strongman General Noriga, who had took, uh, who took over after the death of uh, Trios. And there's been demonstrations from all sectors of Panama society against him in the last uh, week or two. Well, one of the most explosive revelations comes from the retired military chief of staff, Colonel Robert Diaz Herrera, who says that he has firsthand information that indeed the CIA was involved in blowing up the airplane that killed General Torrios, and he, uh, he claims, this is the claim of uh, General Diaz of Panama, that Noriga conspired with General Wallace Nutting, who was then the head of the U.S. Uh, Southern um, Command in Panama and the CIA to blow up uh, the aircraft that Troyos was using and that they gave him a, um, um, an explosive that was put on the plane to um, blow it up. Well, it's just one of those many little minor assassinations that the CIA has been involved in over the years. Boys will be boys. Nothing new. Nothing new. Now let's have our interview with John Stockwell, former high CIA official who was in that agency for 13 years before quitting and writing his famous book, In Search of Enemies. Tonight he evaluates the Reagan revolution for us. John, welcome to Alternative Views. Once again, We're my about pleasure. About what, 30th time? <laughs> <laughs> Best television program in the nation. Mm -hmm, thank you. Well, we've watched the uh, Reagan foreign policy now for the last seven years. We've had you on many times to discuss this. What is distinctive about Reagan's foreign policy? What did he try to do different from his predecessors? Well, he set out 30 years ago to effect a major lasting change on the United States political system, a radical change. And he pursued it to get himself into the White House to effect this change. And he's done it to a degree, <laughs> perhaps not to, you know, he hasn't iced the cake, certainly not the way he hoped. The Aronimuk thing has dis deflected and, and his own corruption or the corruption around him. But no other president in history I don't believe can make a case of, of setting out as a, a middle-aged man to effect a dramatic change on this society and come as close as this man has. And what is the nature of this change? Well, first you have to understand and accept, which is hard for some, but you read the man's biography, the, and we know him well. He's been a public figure for four or five decades, radio announcer and then politician, activist in, in Hollywood. He has never been a conservative with a small c. He has always been drawn to radical activities and uh, propensity towards uh, right-wing radical activities. Even when he was posing uh, as a, a, a liberal a protector of the people who were being blacklisted from the Screen Actors Guild and whatnot, he was in fact cooperating as a friend with the House uh, um, an Un American Affairs Committee and with uh, Richard Nixon's red baiting vicious political campaign in California. Then you see other indications when he was governor, the San Diego Navy Assassination School, which was teaching very heavy techniques of torture and killing. Uh, he was support this under the CIA? No, this was the U.S. Navy, a Navy killer oh school God. in San Diego. When was this? And this was in the late 60s. And <coughs> Reagan was governor of California. You bet. And Reagan was uh, was honoring them and, and mentioning them and going to call them. You bet. Oh, wow. you he bet. loves the military for some reason. He has an absolute fascination with military action and personnel and ships and weapons. And power and control. Uh, second thing you can cite uh, was this California Special Training Institute that we've mentioned before at San Luis Obispo in 1969. It began with Operation, uh, what was it called, Cable Splicer, Cable Splicer yeah. uh, with Luis Giofrida putting it together with uh, generals from the, the Pentagon and the National Guard, as well as corporate executives assembling for a seminar to discuss techniques of, of population control, repression. 
heavy duty stuff the disinformation the torture the planning informants the phony groups the concentration uh, camps uh, the concentration camps the